Like, yeah, today we can have a look at the EQ42 by Robin Garius. It's also known as Phil4.lv2. And from my understanding, part of the code is based on an EQ plugin developed by Fons Adriansen. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing both their names correctly, as I'm not entirely sure. Um, this is a free software, free and open source um, EQ plugin released under the GPL version 2. And it's available for Linux, Windows, and OS X. You can have a read up a bit more about it and where it comes from at the website here. But let's take a look at the plugin. It's become pretty much my go to equalizer within Ardor for any sort of mixing operation. Um, let's take a look through the UI here. So, starting at the bottom left, we've got an a, a global enable and disable button that can be automated like such. You flip this over to play, and you draw in some points here, and we can enable it on and off as we go through. There we go. Which is useful if you just want to EQ a certain little part of your track. Um, the track that I've got here today is by a band of mine called Chilled Vibes, and the track is called Transition Town. I'm just using it for demonstration purposes and a little bit of um, self-promotion, I guess. <laughs> Below the enable and disable button, we have the output gain. So this is after the effect that you've applied from the EQ. As with all of these dials, you can right click to put it back to its default value, which is pretty handy. We have an output peak level here to show you if maybe you're upping the gain a little bit too far before it gets into another plugin and might cause issues. So now I'm going to jump over to the spectrum on the right hand side. I'm going to start playing the track and cycle through the different modes so you can have a look at what's going on. I'm going to make this full screen. So we've got either the sine wave sort of view of what's going on in terms of the frequencies or we have this histogram here. I haven't personally found the histogram all that useful but I think it's mainly because I'm not entirely sure how to use it. Below here we have, we can see either pre or post the EQ. So if I do an adjustment here, you can see that this went down because we're looking at the post. If we look at the pre, it will jump back up like such. I'm just going to pause this for a second. Okay, then below the pre and the post, we have an all or left or right. So you can look at just the left or the right channel. So I'm going to flip this over to left and I've got this calf stereo tools to help us out here. And I'm going to bring the balance just into the left channel. So as I play it here, you'll see for the left channel we see, I'm going to put it post here. For the left channel we see everything as normal. If we flip over to the right now because I've panned it hard to the left, we see nothing. And as I bring this up, it will come back. And below the left and the right here, we have a gain for the spectrum. So you can adjust the amplitude to either bring it up or bring it down as per your needs. Say maybe your source is either a bit too soft, in which case you bring it up, or you can bring it down if your source is a bit too loud. And over here, we have the resolution of the spectrum. The default medium is pretty good. You can reduce the resolution by going to the spark or you can go up to high to get a more defined view of what's going on. I think the medium default's pretty good. I'm gonna skip ahead so we don't continue hearing the same part of the song. Below the resolution, we have this control here which adjusts the speed at which the spectrum falls. So if you put it on rapid, it will fall very quickly, like such. 
So we move it up to fast, and as we go up, it gets slower and slower to fall down. Until we get to this thing, which from what I understand is, is a sum. So it continues summing and summing, so it gives you a view, an average view of what's going on throughout a certain period that you play. I'm going to put this back into medium. Uh, moderate. So now I'm going to jump back to the left hand side. Over here we have a high pass or a low cut, whatever you want to call it. We can adjust it by clicking and dragging this point here to remove more and more of the lows of the track. And that sounds a little bit like this. Similarly to the other controls, we can right click on this control to reset it, or to turn it off. And we can adjust the Q of this value by scrolling, of this point by scrolling up or down. That's a mouse wheel scroll. Which is handy for some more visual edits with the mouse. We can also do the same adjustments down here. and one can hold control while dragging for more fine, finer adjustments. You can also turn it on and off over here. I'm going to leave it off for the time being. Similarly on the right hand side we have low pass or a high cut. And the adjustments are done in a very similar fashion to the high pass or low cut. Next we have a high shelf, which is over here, this box or square. And that we can bring some more brightness or reduce the brightness of the track. Can come in handy. And similarly on the left hand side we have a low shelf. Finally, in the middle section here, we have these bell-shaped curves. I'm going to reset this one. And one thing to note about these is that they have a limited range over which they can adjust the frequency. You can see the values here and here on either side of these dials. So just to note, you won't be able to adjust far down into the base range with the topmost one and similarly with the bottom most one you're not going to be able to get up very far or as far as you can or could. So you want to use the, the dial that's closest to the frequency of where you're going to be working. Similarly with these you can scroll to adjust the cue and you can use these dials as well. Here's a little bit of what it sounds like. What's nice about this is you could automate some of these sort of movements throughout a song on a specific track because it's a very nice, smooth, clear sound, free from artifacts, provided it doesn't clip, which I think it might have just now. Oh, and here's one final tip I only found out recently. On the left hand side here, you can either click and drag or scroll with the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Which will help for some more fine adjustments. And that's pretty much it for this plugin. If you're interested in the track or some listening to some more of this music, you can head over to chilledvibes.com and check it out.